Hey people, hope everything's been well with you. Things have been going good for me. Getting into the nice weather here. So, last weekend, we had a little problem with the blue truck. Uh, we're pulling the transmission out because it had a pop, and then that was it. We had four neutrals. So, pulling the transmission out of this guy. Uh, hopefully, it was just an input shaft. I got a input shaft coming from uh, from Valair so that that's gonna be awesome nice hardened input shaft so hopefully we don't go through this again but hard means brittle so we may um, so for now I'm driving the old 12 valve a uh, little update on this guy is we got the we got the dual steering stabilizers on got to adjust it up a little bit Pretty cool. We got the uh, different steering linkage set up on there. Handles real nice when she hits some bumps. So that's going good. Got to get her inspected for the season though. Um, so we already got the uh, we got the drive shaft and the skid plate out already. Let's give you. A little tour underneath show you what we got going on next so like I said we got the rear drive shaft out and the skid plate is off so our next step here is gonna be unbolting the front drive shaft the four bolt up there and the four bolts right there. Now the breather keeps it nice and lubed up, huh? Um, then after that, then we can take the linkage right there, pop it out. Um, then take the where are they? Yeah, take those vacuum lines off, and then start unbolting. The transfer case from the 47 RE. So that's that's what we're gonna be doing. Oh, there's the uh, transmission bracket right there. She's still holding in there, doing her job. She's looking a little rusty. But she's she's still trusty. Here we are underneath the truck. Um, I'm unbolting. I'm the transfer case from the transmission got this nice wrench here it's got this little bend in there actually works out perfect and if you've ever taken these apart works out perfect to get right up in here and get that that nut out from here works great other than that I would have had to get the transmission jack out and jack up onto the transmission, remove the transmission mount and bracket in order to get access up in there. Let me see if I can get a good shot up in there. Yeah, see there's the stud. Getting there would not be real easy. Let me see if I get a, another angle for you. Yeah, see up in there. There wouldn't have been any room to go from here. It's a really tight spot. So yeah, I would have had to uh, jack up on the transmission and then remove the mount and bracket to gain access. Got them all loosened up. Just gotta start pulling them off now. And then I can just pick that guy up off, move it back, drop it down under my stomach, and slip it out from underneath the truck. Transfer case is out. So let's see if uh, if we got any damage here, if this is the problem. And I can see it's turning. So I don't think that we should have a problem. Let me see if I can 
Set you guys down here. That way you see this or not. Let me see if I can. So now, yeah, I don't think that we got a problem in the transfer case. I think it's definitely in the tranny. Hopefully it's that input. Like I said, I have one ordered up from, uh, from Valer. So uh, hopefully when that gets in, we'll be able to put it into there and take care of the problem. Boy, I'm glad I bought that transmission jack. Getting my use out of her. So now what we're doing is up here. Pulled the plug out of here. We have this cool little adapter that goes in so that way we can turn the engine over. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get up there and show you. See there's the uh, bolt that holds the torque converter in. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling these bolts and using this guy to turn the engine over. I think uh, well, that's a part number for it right there if uh, anybody is interested. I don't know, yeah, I think you probably make that out. Nope, not anymore. <laughs> there you go. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing right now. Well, there she is. The 47RE is out. Check out this damage. Oh, that's not pretty. This is kind of pretty. She's not a factory torque converter. This old girl, she's got the, she's got just flat, flat bottom on her. So that's nice. Over here we got some goodies. Valer billet flex plate with ARP bolts. And Valer hardened input shaft with billet hub. So we're going to go take that tranny apart. Clean it up, see if there's anything else that we need for it. And uh, take it from there. All right, so we got her pulled apart. Down in the back side. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Stripped out at them teeth right there. So, got overdrive housing pulled off. We're just gonna clean some stuff up, check everything over, make sure everything's all right. You know, got some new seals and stuff we're gonna put in and get her back together with that new shaft. Don't wanna get that. Right, oop, right there, that's the, the well we just did right there. It's a little off on the beginning there, and got better on the end. So we're just gonna let it cool for a minute and then just switch and keep doing 
alternating sides until we get it all welded up. Here's all the stuff we're going to put into the tranny. Started out with just the uh, input shaft and then one thing led to another and we got some other goodies. Nice Alto clutch kit. Got some uh, overdrive shims and uh, Torrington bearings. Got some thrust washer kit. The red Alto kit comes with all of the seals and snap rings and gaskets and pretty much everything you're gonna need. Threw in that uh, filter. That's the, the only kind of filter you should ever run. Got some new reverse low band, second gear band, billet pieces to operate it. Them billet pieces for the second gear servo, the actual or accumulator, and reverse low. And then we got the uh, six pinion planetary there for the rear uh, planetary setup. Now I had to play around with this a little bit. What I wanted to do was uh, weld it in. A, bung so now I have a drain so it can drain the fluid out through there and I also welded another bung on over here so that way I can have my temperature sensor temperature sensor thread right into there so that way it's hanging out into the pan yeah, no, it shouldn't look that pretty in there, but... Yeah, well, I think it's pretty cool. So I'll cover those guys up. Can't really see the weld that well. There it is. So we got our transfer case and our pan all prepped up. The uh, pan we treated with the Coro seal and then uh, figured why not we got the transfer case out. We're going to hit it up with some chassis saver. Make sure she's all nice and clean and black. Figured got it out. Why not make it nice? It's going to be driven in the winter time so we want to do as much rust and corrosion prevented maintenance that we can. Another thing I wanted to show you is uh, to test this clutch pack, which sits on top of the input shaft. Put it onto your pump, and then charge that port right there with air, and it will activate that, charge that. Because what I tried to do, hang on one second. tried to do was that slit right there I tried to cover most of it with my hand and put air to it couldn't get it so slide it onto the pump charge with that port finally we're starting to get somewhere getting back together all the Billet pieces are starting to come together and she's looking good. Just got to keep plugging away. Now 
we're getting closer to the end of the build so we got the tranny all put back together we just got to check our input shaft end play so we got the dial indicator all set up zero it out what we're gonna do is on the other side where we put our valve body in we're gonna take a screwdriver get her into there and we're gonna watch here and that's what we get I think that's uh, right about on the money there, what, 3.9? Yep. So, I think we should be freaking right, ready to go. Here's a quick comparison between the two. Here's the factory one. You can see how thick that is. Versus the billet one. You can see how thick that one is. Much thicker. So I don't think that we're going to have to reuse this plate. Here's the factory hardware. I don't see any thread locker on there. No, no nothing. I'm going to put a little uh, blue Loctite on them. And I put the ARP ones in so let's get to putting her in All right, we're down here underneath the bed of the truck as you can see I have this bracket made up here I'm gonna take this guy I'm probably just gonna paint them and fast tap them up here make another one to go there and then I'm gonna hang my transmission cooler off of that bracket and then run the lines probably long down into the frame and then up out of the frame up there somewhere or up on top of the tank I, I don't know but that's that's where it's gonna go <laughs> Right above the rear differential, right there. There's plenty of space for it. So that's where I'm going to end up putting her. So here's the uh, transmission cooler. Here's the bracket. So it's going to go up in there. And then uh, that we're going to drill some holes. And mount that onto there like that. And let her hang. Well, here she is. Back where we started, right in front of the blue truck here. Look at that. Blue with black. I like it. We're going to call this guy Emerald. Like Emerald Lagasse. So every shift is going to just be like, bam! All right, we got the torque converter up in there. Got some fluid in the torque converter. Um, now we are jacking it up in the place. We're almost there. Just gotta wiggle her around and get her up in the place. Yeah, you can uh, notice the uh, speed sensor right there. I uh, busted it off while I was rebuilding it. I have a new one, so. I still want to put it in until after I got it in the truck in case, you know, I, you know, would break off the new one putting it on the, on the jack. It's not too easy doing this by yourself, but we're getting there. Alright, we got the uh, transmission all bolted in. Now time to bolt up the torque converter. Let's see, we have our firing tool here so up in the hole here you can 
see that it's uh, rotated the torque converter so the threads are showing and then uh, we'll go through and use our briring tool to turn it over and put the bolts and torque them down. Alright, finished up on the transmission. Uh, we also did a little Greg A delete on the, the trim molding that ran right along through there. Looks a little bit better, more sporty look. So, up underneath here, transmission is in. Got our transmission lines, you can see them hooked up there. Used part of the factory, ran around that side to avoid the drive shaft. There's our plug to drain the fluid. It's not in the best spot with the uh, the skid plate right there, but she works. And then, uh, as you can see, the lines come back around. Back side of the painted transfer case. And they go up. Up into the frame rail. Let's go back, take a look at that transmission cooler. Hello. Come around to the back. Pop up under here. There's our uh, transmission cooler. All wired up. As you can see, the, the brackets I was talking about painted them, fast tap them in there. Now when I put this in here, I don't know if you can see it all that well. I tried to tilt it so that way you can see my finger sliding it up in there. So that way it's a little bit of an angle to give it some more room to draw more air from the top side. Because I've people complained about this being a bad spot to put them. Not a whole lot of airflow. So as you can see the rubber hose go back up into there. Um the kit offered a thermostat for it. But, uh, I did not end up doing that. I just went and wired up a switch with a relay. Actually, it was a pretty cool setup uh, at uh, Tractor Supply for the light bars, LED light bars. I got a whole wiring harness, so I have it hooked up to a switch. Key does not have to be on, but there she is running. I mean, like, I don't know if you can see it, but the grass is blowing around out back behind the truck here. And that's from the air movement from the fan up underneath there so I'd say she's pretty good so now the only thing that's left to do is to take this girl for a test drive 